Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert. Yes, the Eagle has landed. Universal Audio's Lunar Recording System is out, it's live, and it's available for all you Apollo Thunderbolt users to get your greasy mitts on. However, I was very lucky and got myself a little bit of a head start. So what I'm going to do over the next three videos is give you a full guided tour of the GUI, hopefully give you some insight into how Luna functions, the back end, some of the stuff that you maybe won't have seen from the NAM coverage. In video number two, we're going to take you through a basic recording session, a couple of guitars, some percussion, a vocal. Uh, and in number three, we're going to give you a kind of a deep dive into the mixing kind of process and some of the lovely stuff that Universal Audio have crammed in in the last few days, few hours of work to get Luna out nice and early. So let's face it, those of us in splendid isolation can get creative and get down to making some serious music. So let's dive over onto my Mac and um, head for the stars. And I'm really sorry, I can't promise there won't be more terrible Luna jokes in this video. So here we are in Luna, and this is the first window you will come to once you've logged in. Now, all the way through the beta process and through the release candidate process, there's been a login process where you have to put your email address and password in. I'm not sure whether that will stay into the full version, because obviously still I'm on a pre-release version. However, down this side is where things get interesting to start off with. We have the Create panel. This is basically our new session dialogue. And we also have the Luna Basics tutorial series. We have the Discover page. Here we can explore our UAD account, find out some special offers, new releases, tips and tricks from the pros, that sort of stuff. Manage, which shows me all the plugins and various Luna goodies, Luna extensions, and all that sort of stuff that I have going on. You can see I have one or two and one or two still to download. Now it has to be said that some of these options are paid for, things like the Mini Moog, Neve Summing, Revell, and the Studer 800 tape machine are paid upgrades, paid Luna extensions. But there are some of these, uh, Oxide Tape, for example, the ARP and Shape, which are all bundled in with Luna from the get-go. Down here in settings is a page that any of you who have a Universal Audio Apollo will be fairly familiar with. Hardware, IO matrix, and options is taken straight from the settings page in the UAD2 console. So we can create a new session or we can dive into existing ones. I have a couple of sessions here that I'd like to show you. However, let's hit on the diamond logo and go straight into Luna. Now, I appreciate for many of you, this is your first view of this new recording system. And any of you Pro Tools users out there, we're very pleased to know that most of the shortcuts you're used to in Pro Tools, things like Command Equals, to go between the kind of edit view and the mixer view, work exactly the same as you'd expect in Luna, which is really rather handy. Now, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down for this tutorial. And we're going to start right in the top right-hand corner. This is very, very cool. If you have a problem or if there's something you want to let UA know about, right in the DAW is a report feedback form. And you can get to someone, and I know firsthand that these get looked at and answered, which is really rather cool. So let's work our way along the top. First of all, we have the view selector. We can go between the timeline view, the mixer view, and then we have the option to show and hide different window views. So we can show and hide the tracks window, the focus window, info down the bottom, and the monitor. We have our tempo, our click level, and click on and off, our main counter, transport controls, pre and post roll, and length selection. This is the global section. So as the name suggests, by a click here, we can turn record enable on and off globally, input monitor on and off globally, the clip overload icons on and off globally, solos, mute, and ARM mode. We then can control the monitor, we can mute it, and if we want to, we can change the level. And then we have our workflows. Now, these are very, very handy little reminders almost. Rather than cluttering up the top end of the screen with a whole load of stuff you hardly ever use, 
UA have invented these workflows. So we have a recording workflow, a MIDI workflow, an edit workflow, and a mix workflow. I tend to leave it on the recording workflow because that's what I do most of the time. But if you don't want it, you can bury it. Now down the left hand side of Luna, we have the tracks window. Now in Pro Tools, I don't find I use this a great deal. However, in Luna, it's a very, very useful place to be because you can navigate around your session and very quickly jump to the track or tracks you want to be working with. Really, really handy. We then have the track window, which identifies what's going on on the track selected. So in this case, I can click on the Friedman part or go up and look at the lead vocal and you can see things start to change. Now, as we go through, you'll see that what happens here is incredibly important and there's an awful lot going on. We then have our timelines along the top, loops, bars, minutes, seconds, tempo, signatures, markers, all the normal stuff. If you don't want to see something, uncheck it and away it goes, giving you more lovely screen real estate. Up here in the bars and beats timeline, we have some stuff that's fairly familiar to Pro Tools users. The link edit and play selections, our grid value, whether we have grid on or off, or whether it's a snap to grid or relative grid. So moving on down, we have the main timeline window. And again, all the usual Pro Tools shortcuts apply. And you can see we can open up a track we can view information about the clip. We can look at the four different types of automation. We have our track mode types, time and tempo. Think of these a little bit like samples and ticks in a Pro Tools terminology. We then have the warp settings. These are for our different very speed and time stretch modes. Polyphonic, monophonic, very speed, lunar razor and lunar polyphonic are Universal Audio's own time stretch and compression algorithms, and they are very, very nice indeed. Now, there are three main track types in Luna. There are audio tracks, there are buses, and there are instrument tracks. That's it. No auxiliaries, no MIDI tracks, none of that sort of stuff. UA have kept it very, very simple. Now, I think even UA would agree that Luna is not going to replace Pro Tools when it comes to uh, Atmos surround mixing or anything like that. That's not what it's trying to do. It's very much a stereo platform, and I think at the moment it's very happy that way. It's very stable. I will say that. I've not had a single touch wood moment where Luna has fallen over on me in the middle of a tracking session. They've done a really good job of making sure it's fully optimized and works really, really well. Let's go over into the mixer. And again, you can see those three track types here quite clearly. And again, I should be navigating around in a far more efficient way, really. Uh, so we have our lead vocal is an audio track. We then have a drum bus stereo track. And we have an instrument track. Now, in the mixer, we have this central selection area that we can use to navigate around things much, much easier. We have our input section, and the input section also shows the tape section, which is really, really nice. We'll come on to that in a minute. Inserts, cues, output selection. Now, cues is nice. I can make those large or small. I have four cues, which is really, really nice. That is dependent on your UA hardware and how you've set the processing up, things like that. Um, obviously, one of the main features of Luna is the lovely Neve summing. Now you can see here, I've got a chamber setting set up. Believe it or not, this is actually my reverb return and I can have Neve summing on my reverb return if I want to. If I don't want it, I can just turn it off. But here I've got the capital chambers plugin set up. There it is, ready to go as my reverb return. I've also got some really useful global modifiers here. I can turn everything off, remove things all in one go, reset to defaults, lots of useful stuff. Again, I've got a master solo, clear, 
and overload and ARM. Now, ARM or ARM stands for Advanced Real-Time Monitoring. Now, this is where Luna really does draw on its very close ties with the Universal Audio Apollo Thunderbolt hardware. If I put this lead vocal track into Record Enable, you'll see a few interesting things happen. If I go out again, toggle out, toggle back in. First of all, my input comes to life and I can choose my input down the side. Now I've got an Apollo X4 attached here, so I've got four microphone inputs, two of them with line and high Z inputs, eight ADA inputs, virtual inputs, monitors, all that sort of stuff if I need it. This is where the business end of things is. Now I'm going to choose to put a Unison plugin in the Unison slot. Now I don't know which ones I've got, so let's go for... Avalon. All I have to do is type the first few letters. It finds it for me. And there it is, active in the slot. Very, very nice. Let's bury that. Now I can control all the attributes of my Apollo directly from Luna. I don't have to go out into the console. I can turn phantom power on, the pad, phase invert, the filter, all from Luna, which is really nice. I then have some record effects. Now it's worth noting that as before, anything in the Unison plugin slot, this is going to get burnt in. It's an effect that we printed to tape. That is also true of any effects we choose to put in the record effects slot. So let's put an API 560 EQ in there. And let's put an 1176 Rev A in there. Now, we can have up to four record effects, which is really nice. We can then, if we want to, add a tape. Let's add the Studer. And we can add insert effects. Now, the Unison slot and the record effects will be committed to tape effectively. Now let's just go over that again. The Unison slot plugin and the record effects plugins will be committed and burnt as part of our recording. The tape and anything we put in the insert slot, so let's put a Fairchild 660, hey, because we can, they will not be burnt in to the audio file. Nor, of course, will any sends or cues or anything like that that we make be burnt in. It's also worth noting that these insert effects can be non-universal audio plugins. I don't have any on this machine. They can be any AU plugin that works with a normal DAW, which is really, really sweet. So you're not entirely tied in to the UAD2 plugin family. Now let's go along a, bit, a little bit further to have a look at our vocal bus. Now obviously the highlight here is Neve summing, we like that. But we've also got inserts there, so if you want to put tape saturation on your inserts, you can do. You've also got sends on your buses as well. Again, really, really nice, all the usual stuff. The final track type is instruments, which we'll come on to in the next video where we talk about tracking. Final section is our master section over here. We can look at all the things to do with control room routing, our Q outputs. This also includes the click outputs as well. You'll see actually so far we've seen very few floating windows in Luna, which I really like because quite frankly they're a pain in the you know where. The click track's pretty straightforward. This is our click level, our click going to our main monitors and our click to our four Qs. The Q output routing, at the moment my headphones are plugged into headphone output number two, and I'm getting a direct reproduction of the main mix. That's fine. can bury the control room stuff if I want to. I've got all that control here. If I want to put effects on the talkback mic, which is built into the Apollo, I can do. Again, all this stuff is totally controllable from the front panel. I can mute. Dim, use the alternative inputs, check for mono, use the talkback mic. Really, really good stuff.
Now, the final thing I want to talk about in this video is Luna's file management. If we go back to the UA Diamond, you can see, obviously, I've got some previous files. I can go in. But spot what's missing from this drop-down menu. There is no basic save option. Luna is always saving. It's always getting on and doing that sort of stuff in the background. That's because it's based around a database hierarchy structure. It's not based around basic file structure. It's a lot more advanced, a lot more complicated in the background, which quite frankly means a, Luna is very, very stable, but if it does fall over, the last second was saved, not the last 10 minutes ago when you last remembered to hit Command S. It's very, very cool. It's very clever. I'm not even going to begin to try and explain how the databasing system works. All I know is, thus far, it does work. Now, there's a few things that Pro Tools users will find a little bit strange. There is a save copy as, which is handy. There's revert to saved, which of course I can do. Again, very, very handy. Rename, all that sort of stuff. We can start new from up here. We can open files. We can import files from here and we can export files from here. We'll talk about that when we get on to mixing. But Pretty much everything you need to get up and running and making music is here in Luna for free. Now, some of you are going to say, but aren't we going back seven years to when DigiDesign and then Avid made us buy Avid hardware to use Pro Tools? Well, the main difference for me there is I'm pretty sure that Avid charged us for Pro Tools. Universal Audio aren't charging us for Luna. Another thing I said to the Universal Audio team was, I'm always a little bit concerned when someone gives me something for free that because it's the free version, not the full fat paid for version, it's not going to be taken as seriously. They're telling me this is not the case. This is very much an added value thing. You're buying into the Luna recording system when you buy an Apollo, whether you're choosing to use Luna or not. It's all part of the same workflow. It's all part of the same ecosystem now. Luna has been on the cards for a very long time. It's been something they've been thinking about for a very long time. This isn't something they did on a whim. This isn't some reactionary thing that Universal Audio have done. They spent a long time thinking about it, planning it, getting it right. One of the phrases I'm hearing is paper cuts. They're trying to get rid of all the little things that niggle and get in the way and slow you down like a paper cut. I would have thought they're going to come up with a far more space-based terminology. But hey, I like the fact they're going in and finding things that just make our lives a misery. They could be tiny, tiny little things that just get in our way and drive us to distraction. All these little things together add up and make a big difference to your speed and to your workflow. And I like that. So there you go. That's the guided tour, the bare bones or the lunar surface, if you will. I'm so sorry. In the next video, we're going to look at tracking using lunar. But for now, my name's James Ivy, and I'll see you again very soon for some more gear talk.